Hey everybody, Strainyard here. This is week 27 Tuesday. Here we go. Week 27 Tuesday, here we go. Making improper to divide. So we're gonna multiply the denominator times the whole number to get four. And then we will add the numerator to get five fourths. And we're gonna divide that by two, the denominator times the whole number, which is four plus the one is five, but this is halves. So we can't just divide across. We've got two options here. So here are the two options. One, you can, in the purple, we made an equivalent fraction of five halves to 10 fourths to make our denominators match. Now we're just doing five divided by 10, which of course would be, let me switch to my color here, one over two or one half. Over on this side in the red, we just did keep, change, flip, where I kept the first number. I changed the divisor or the division sign of multiplication and I flipped the five and the two to two over five, which is the reciprocal, because multiplying by the reciprocal is the same as dividing something. So that one would give us 10 over 20, which is also one half. So no matter what, we're gonna get the answer one half right there. So we'll make these improper. Three is the denominator of two and a third times two holes, which would give us six thirds plus our one third gives us seven thirds. And then four, our denominator times our one hole gives us four fourths plus one fourth is five fourths. And we notice that our denominators do not match so let's do our two options. So I wrote out here the equivalent fraction version where we make the denominators match. In this case, the lowest number they can both match with, the lowest common multiple is 12. Three times four is 12, so seven times four is 28. Four times three is 12, so five times three is 15. Now we can just divide straight across. 28 divided by 15, which is 28 fifteenths, which when simplified is one and 13 fifteenths, because if you take one set of 15 fifteenths out, that leaves you 13. Over here, I did keep, change, flip, and we kept seven third. We are multiplying by the reciprocal of five fourths, and we get 28 fifteenths, which is one and 13 fifteenths. So no matter what, our answer is one and 13 fifteenths. So I'll just take you through both of these. A or B, we're looking for a median or a middle number of 17. They're already in order from least to greatest, so we're just gonna start crossing off. Here's three, there's three, here's two, here's two. Um, let's do three more. One, two, three, and then let's do two and two. It looks like it's going to be A. Let's go ahead and figure out B just for fun. Let's take out these five, and that's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, six, seven, six, seven, um, let's do two and two, and then let's do one and one, and that leaves us 18, so it is plot A. Number four, finding the median. Step one is, oops, step one here would be to reorder these numbers from least to greatest. Now I'm just gonna start canceling out to the middle. Keep it simple. If you hear my kids, those are my kids. Looks like we're left with 14 right there in the middle, so our median is 14. For number 5, it's just 32% of 16, so our total is 16, and we're going to break it into smaller portions and find out what 32% or 0.32, 32 hundredths is. So there's more than one way to do it, but since it's um, of, of means multiply, this is the easiest, to just write the, um, since this is an odd well, it's even, but a percentage that doesn't easily break up into a smaller fraction that you can draw a tape diagram or anything. So you just take the 32% and write it as a decimal, which of course is to divide it by 100, making it 32 hundredths or 0.32. Now we're going to multiply. 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 3 is 18. Plus 1 is 19. Drop the 0. Then we just have the 2 and the 3 because that's times 1. Now we add those together. 11, 3, 4, 5, and we need two decimal place values because there were two in our answer. So it is 5 and 12 hundredths is 32% of 16. So for these, and if you hear some singing in the background, again, my kids are painting, they're having a good time. So 
we've got uh, 5, negative 2, which is right 5, down 2, and then we have um, right 5, up 5, and you'll notice that the x coordinates are the same, right? That means we're going to actually have a vertical line because they're both 5 units to the right. One's going to be down at negative 2, one's going to be up at 5, so we can really just find the diff distance between, if we had a number line here, negative 2 and 5. So 1, 2 would make 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That is a distance of 7 units. So the answer to this one's going to be 7 units, but let's prove it by plotting the points. So here you can see my point at 5, negative 2, and at 5, 5, and it makes a straight vertical line. So now my distance between the points would just be counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is 7 units apart. For question 8, we're looking at point D, which is right here. It looks like it's at negative 6, negative 7. And we are noticing that it's in the negative, negative quadrant, right? You can either be positive, positive, which is what we call quadrant 1. And they use Roman numerals. We can be, then we're going to go counterclockwise, right? And just go 2, 3, 4. So it's in 3, but let's, this is our negative positive quadrant. So we're going to call that quadrant 2. And then we have our negative negative quadrant, which is quadrant 3. And our uh, positive negative quadrant, which we're going to call quadrant 4. So D is in quadrant 3. And that's the same as just saying three. So as I look at this, I see my connection between 170 and 17 that just dropped to zero. So that's just divided by 10 going to the right, which would mean it's times 10 going to the left. So here, I'm just going to take 12 times 10, which is going to be 120. Uh, down here, I'm going to do 4 times 10, which is going to make 40. And I double checked, but you should always double check. Is 110 divided by 10, 11? Yes. Is 50 divided by 10, 5? Yes. Number 10, we've got our nice ratio question. You'll notice I used uh, two different colors just to show that five white milks for every two chocolate milks is our ratio. And five white milks came first. So our first description here should be the white milks, not the chocolate milks. So we're going to write the five first. And then the chocolate milks come second, which is our two. Now that is in simplest form, so the rest of our problem is because for every five white milks, they serve two chocolate milks, which of course is nowhere near true if you know anything about school lunches. Chocolate milk comes first. I am done. That's great, buddy. So that was lesson uh, week two, week 27, Tuesday. And that's what my kids were doing in the background, so uh, sorry if you heard a lot of extra noise, but hopefully they'll pull the tape off and that'll look pretty awesome. We'll see how it goes. They've destroyed my door. All right. See you later.